ho, 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 Merry Eastern. Because this is how you traditionally traditionally greet people on Easter, right? I, I know a holiday, so don't don't trick me. Um, so, uh, sorry for being a day late. Uh, yesterday, uh, I don't know, the, the, the day was just over. I, I, I was like, oh, looking on the clock, and it was like, oh, already afternoon. And the next time I looked, it was 4 a.m. in the morning. And I was like, oops, I didn't do a vlog. Uh, which is also, I guess, the first red flag that I have this feeling of obligation when it comes to those vlogs. But uh, so far, I still enjoy doing this, and uh, I, I'm fine about it. So all good. I will continue this for the time being. Let's see if I change my mind uh, spontaneously from one day to the next. I don't know. Nevertheless, um, yeah, uh, I, I guess there's a certain topic I cannot avoid addressing since uh, when a country, uh, neighboring your own country, falls victim to a terrorist attack, you can or at least should not completely ignore it. So about the attacks in Brussels, um, just wanted to say, yes, I'm fine. Uh, Obviously, I mean, if you look at a map, uh, Brussels is not even in Germany, and it is in Belgium, which is uh, western, uh, in the west of uh, west western of Germany. And uh, I'm living in the east of Germany, so uh, I am a few hundred kilometers away from the thing. Um, even uh, just just a heads up, even if something would happen in Berlin, the chances that I would be affected are also very slim because I don't live near the uh, government with the district, which is on the other end of the city over there, and uh, I also don't live an near any uh, tourist hotspots, so uh, I, I'm living in a very, very quiet, um, uh, yeah, uh, living area where there are basically only flats and a few supermarkets and stuff like this, so uh, even if something like this happens, no panic, uh, but yeah, Besides me, it's uh, obviously for the people in Brussels, it's not this uh, relaxing, so... Um, however, there might actually be something good to take away from this entire attack. Um, it, it, it's a very cynical thing to say, to, uh, to be honest, uh, but... Back when there were, have been the attacks in Paris, uh, and I went on Facebook, it was basically from bottom to top... Uh, Nearly everybody has used uh, this, this little app thingy, whatever, to uh, put a, the flag of uh, France on top of your profile image. So basically the entire Facebook was uh, blue, white, red from bottom uh, top to bottom, which is not as impressive as it sounds, considering that Facebook is already blue and white to begin with. But yeah, everybody was using this app. This time around... So far, I haven't seen a single Belgian flag, and uh, I even still see two French flags. So, I know that this is the most superficial thing you can do to show your uh, concern by, oh, I changed my Facebook image, and I, I, I consider this very silly and stupid to begin with, and uh, I wasn't taking part in it back then either. However, it tells something else. Uh, it... it it says that pe that people are so little affected that they don't even change their prof uh, their cha Facebook profile, and on the one hand, yes, this is very cynical to say that people are like, oh well, another terrorist attack, uh, people dead. But on the other hand, what is the one thing that is terrorist terrorism supposed to do? It is about striking fear in people, and because you, it's it's. I mean, it, it, it's even below war. I mean, the definition of war is uh, uh, fighting for political um, goals with uh, different measures and talking. Um, it's just a more ex um, extreme, a more escalated version of diplomacy. Terrorism is even further because uh, you can't even win in a fair battle. So what do you do? Uh, you uh, are uh, a backstabbing coward who... Uh, uh, works with the fear of people that you could strike everywhere and you could be next and you could, there is nothing to do about it. This is basically how terrorism works. And it's also... But here's the thing. If this effect goes away, if people are no longer affected by an attack... I mean, obviously the people in Brussels are, especially those close to the uh, victims, but if you think about it, 
if terror is if if, if attacking an airport is just uh, uh, doesn't get this effect in the popularity, terrorists have lost. You can't fight terrorism with the war on terrorism thing because there will always be a nutcase with a bomb. But if this nutcase knows that nobody gives a fuck if he blows himself up, he will think twice. So I know this is super cynical and everything, but if there's anything good we can take away from it, it is like maybe terrorists are destroying the, themselves in a figurative way by oversaturating us with their attacks and therefore uh, making us care less. As, wow, as dark as it is that caring less might be the solution to terrorism. Okay, moving on to something less depressing. Um, I had a horribly uh, stressful with the we uh, week at work. Um, no, uh, I don't know. It it was really once again nothing uh, particular. It it basically comes down to the fact that uh, I still have a vacancy in my team, and therefore uh, we have to uh, carry the workload uh, with only two instead of three people. Um, but yeah, I recall that I was pretty done for it every day uh, I came home. But uh, surprisingly enough, I was uh, managed to be productive uh, throughout uh, Easter. And um, the, it's a good thing because I have a lot to do, uh, especially considering that next weekend I uh, will be at a convention and have a small panel I still need to prepare. I mean, I have a small uh, plan with bullet points, like what I want to talk about, but I haven't created a presentation and no key cards with an order and stuff like this. So this is something I need to put a little bit of thought into as well, hopefully today, because if the following week will turn out last than that, like the last week and I will have to spend a lot of uh, after hours, um, I have no idea how I will have a presentation on Saturday morning ready. So, yeah, this this is going to be an interesting week. Um, yeah, and uh, as probably a last note, uh, I started playing Bioshock Infinite because... Oh, ah, damn it, who was it? Oh, God, I'm a horrible person. Somebody sent it over to me. Um, oh, it was... Uh, um, how to pronounce his name? I, I did it correctly in my uh, thanks to Patreon, uh, Kanabazia. Um, I believe it was him. Oh God, this would be so embarrassing if if it wasn't him. Uh, I believe it was him. Please tell me that it has been you. God, this would be bad if it wasn't him. Oh yes, it was him. Whoo! This would have been bad. But yeah, the Cannabisia, one of my Patreons, was like, well, uh, since you produ don't produce anything for me to send uh, my uh, support your way, here, have a game. And so I started playing Bioshock Infinite. Um, so far, uh, I'm a little bit like... Uh, I mean, it was praised so much back then that I was like, oh, seems to be a really, really amazing game. Um, it's not bad. I'm... A little bit underwhelmed so far. Uh, the narrative is really, really not doing a great job. It, I mean, all the Bioshock games have always been super linear. Uh, not, not, not uh, no way around it. They have always been like. Um, I mean, okay, I'm talking about always. I only played Bioshock one. I still have Bioshock two in my uh, um, playlist on. Uh, on my Steam, on my, on my, on my uh, library. I never have played it so far. But I know that Bioshock 1 was like super linear. But it made a good way of hiding it. Um, maybe it get better with uh, when I continue uh, with Infinite. But uh, it's like... And the setup was better. In, in um, a little bit of spoiler, I guess. Uh, in uh, Bioshock 1, it was like there was a plane crash. You came down and there was a, a lighthouse. And it was basically, you were in the middle of the ocean. You had to go to the lighthouse because it was the only chance to get anywhere. Then in the lighthouse, there's nothing but this elevator thingy. So obviously you go in there. And 
once you come out of it, you instantly get attacked. So obviously you fight back and you grab everything you can to save your ass. Mm. Like every weapon, every whatever it was called that make you shoot stuff and uh, uh, every money you can find. Because you are desperate, you are under attack, you are in hostile territory. Now here comes Bioshock Infinite. And, and, and you have a little bit of amnesia going on there. Um, here comes Bioshock Infinite. You have a clear goal. You, you are a private detective who is sent to uh, Columbia in order to uh, retrieve this girl. No context given. Okay, you are a private detective. And you go along with everything. You are like, okay, I am supposed to get this girl. So I go into this very strange apparatus and whoo, look where I am now. And uh, then you are in the city and I was like, okay... I started picking up money wherever I found it because, hey, I, it's not the first game I played. Uh, this is an instinct. It's so much an instinct. Like, So I picked up all the money. I, I basically stole all the money for the first for the entire first level because everything I saw, like, pick up, pick up. And here's the weird thing. I thought it was a horrible immersion breaker. I was like, sure, I go around and see everything. There is a popcorn vendor right the first time you enter the city, on the right side, there is a popcorn vendor. And I'm like, okay, maybe I can buy a piece of popcorn. I, just out of curiosity, I wanted to see the game world work. And I went to the vendor, there was a popcorn on his uh, his cart, and I had the option to just pick it up. So I picked it up, I ate it, and I didn't even have to pay. And he was just standing there leaning on like... And I was like, well, this was lame. You have this super lively, created world with all the people interacting and talking and stuff. But it, the, you can't just go to a vendor and steal his goods and nothing happens. And it was like, poof, emergent done. It was like, oh well, this was lame. And uh, it continues like this. You, you stumble through the city without any goal or anything. You are like, ah. Oh, oh, oh. Find a girl, and you have no direction whatsoever. You have, it is super linear, so you walk down the only way you can because every other route is closed off, but you have no idea why you do it. In the original Bioshock, it was like, I want to survive. I, I, I need to freaking get out of here. And you're like, I need to find a girl in a gigantic city, so I walk down this only way I can. Yeah? <laughs> uh, so... The setup in the original Bioshock, why both are super linear, in the original Bioshock the setup, were, setup worked better in favor of the story. Here it was really like, what? And, okay, to be fair to the game, later on the game mechanic, uh, the, the game mechanic, uh, mechanics change a little bit. Later on, when you go into, um, once, once you earned your fighting skills and whatnot, ever, when there actually has been fighting in the game, when you go up to a vendor then and steal, his cash, uh, steal the money out of his cash here, first of all, there will be a little bit like uh, you are stealing stuff in a sign, which I was like, because I was so in the routine, like, oh yeah, oh yeah, there's a cash here. Uh, tuck, tuck, take, and only after I took the money, I realized, wait, this message was red instead of normal white. And the uh, shop owner was like, I worked hard for this. And he picks up a baseball bat and comes after me. And I was like, on the one hand, I was like, thank you. This is a reasonable reaction to me stealing your shit. But on the other hand, I was like, fuck you game for changing the mechanics mid-game. Um, so... What should have been a good thing turned out to be another immersion breaker. Um, then, oh, there's a scene in the tower. Um, not going... Uh, well, pff, the game is old and everybody knows about Elizabeth. So, when you first come to the tower in which Elizabeth lives, it's again, you go from room to room. Every room has a window where you can see Elizabeth through. So, you go to the first room, open the window, and you see her do shit. Then she leaves the room... You walk down this linear path, and the linear path happened to lead to the next room where you can once again see her. In an actual observatorium, it would be different. Either you would have all your view, your, your observation posts in the middle, in the center, so you can easily switch 
and and all are accessible from everywhere. So, uh, but who would build this kind of observation structure which has a linear path surrounding this other linear path where the uh, uh, specimen can move in? Uh, once again, an immersion breaker with this ridiculous amount of linearity. And it could have been fixed so easily. I mean, they have this board which is basically saying where she is, so you could just move to the different areas, but no, you go along this linear track. Um, then there are those few game mechanics where I'm not sure yet. I mean, I'm very early on in the game, I have to say, where I'm not sure if they don't feel natural. It's like um, with the lockpicks. You have to collect your lockpicks and... Uh, stuff like this and there are so much stuff thrown in like the lock picks the clothes but they all unlike for example um a bethesda game where stuff like lock picking comes with skills and uh stuff and of course you have clothing as well but it it, it feels a lot more dynamic than having four slots for clothing and you don't even can access them easily and uh, <sighs> i mean it basically, if you think about it, it comes down to the same. You have clothing, and of course you can only wear one uh, uh, piece of armor and one hat, which is the same in a Bethesda game as it is in Infinite. But for some reason, Infinite, it feels so tacked on. And once again, with how you have to collect a, a certain amount of lock picks to pick more difficult locks, it's, it's, it turns into resource management. I don't know, it's weird. It, it feels weird. It, it, it doesn't feel organic, but maybe it could just be me. And um, Beyond this, gameplay itself is, is fine, it's solid. Um, the story, even so, how it plays out feels very weird and awkward and um, unimmersive. Uh, the story itself is still interesting. Um, I mean, I haven't seen too much of it so far. Um... So yeah, I will call, and it's gorgeous. This is one thing you can say about this game. It is freaking gorgeous. So yeah, I will continue playing it. I will most likely finish it. Uh, I'm not sure how much of an achievement whore I will be. I, I, I kind of recently, I like being an achievement whore, but recently I came to the um, conclusion that uh, I don't have the time for it. I, I mean, if, if you want to... Uh, complete a game like like with all achievements and you have some insane achievements that require grinding what f like hell um i simply can't afford it easier said and which is kind of uh, i have to because uh, over the last few years i developed a little bit of uh, uh, a fixation on achievements in games and like ah, come on tr try to get uh, tr try to perfect a game but um I need to get away from this again and enjoy games more for themselves and not for achievements. Uh, because I don't have the time to finish it, therefore it will stay unsatisfying. Um, yeah, but I'm also rambling on for nearly 20 minutes now, uh, so I really should cut this uh, at this point. So, guess everybody have a good week. See you next time.